Coach K and John A. You know that it's working, but don't forget about Coach K. Okay. Hey guys, so we got three burning questions that we gotta answer today. Our favorite producer in the world, Johnny's gonna ask us these questions and then we're gonna have a nice simple debate. Ready guys? Yes, First one, can Pascal Siakam lead a championship offense without Kawhi? No. Pretty simple, mm -hmm. like, I don't think, listen, like Siakam's a great player. But he's a Scottie Pippen, man. Kawhi proved that. He's mm -hmm. just the second star to an elite team. No disrespect to our guy who's most likely going to be an MVP candidate. Uh, one hopefully. Of yeah. But he's just, I just don't, right now, I just don't see him as that guy. And and if, if there's anything that the playoffs have taught us is that you need that second guy. Whether whether that be Freddie, Kyle, uh I oh no, I don't want to say OG's name. Like you know, what I mean? like you need that, stop. but you need that second star to be a championship team. And unfortunately, Toronto does not have that. Yeah, just, last year we had it definitely with Kawhi and Pascal. That's why it was it was almost like a given that we were yeah. uh, NBA talented team, like a championship talented team. But this year, yeah, we're nice. Yeah, we're deep, and I would love for the Raptors to go to the finals. But so what we're really saying is that Giannis, please come to Toronto, okay? <laughs> because then we'll then we'll go back to the one and two punch that. That every playoff team needs. Of course, of course. Knicks. Will Chris Middleton and Eric Bledsoe be enough to win a title? I'm gonna go. No, they're not enough to win the title. But yes, they are enough to get them to the finals. Um, if you guys, if you guys remember, we had an episode uh, where I kind of went off on the Milwaukee Bucks because I thought like their offensive. Play was just stagnant at all all times, all time. Not sometimes yeah. the transition. Obviously, they have Giannis, so they're the best, one of the best transition teams. But offensively, in the half court set, it sometimes seems a little bit um, lazy. But then I think right before the quarantine happened, they were like they were actually trying to play nice. They actually had a much better system. Chris Milton got a lot better offensively in the last couple of months for sure. Um, and then we'll see what happens to him in the bubble. I heard that he didn't really practice a lot during the quarantine. So if that's the case, then if he's gonna come to the bubble, then I don't even know if they'll make the playoffs. I mean the final. So I will say this: What did Giannis say before the bubble that he didn't do? And then I'm it's like finally Giannis did. is a God-given talent. Listen, Chris listen. Is like a Giannis player. was hooping. He lied. He was hooping. Yeah. Chris Middleton was hooping. You really think Chris Middleton wasn't trying to get better during his quarantine? They were in, in, in Milwaukee. Milwaukee. What's there to do? In what, what kind of COVID cases are in Milwaukee? No disrespect to America, no COVID cases. I just think that he probably tried to sneak out and go. Yeah, he probably did. 100%. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I, just, I think if these guys want to try that bad, I think he was. To get to my point, I think they are enough. Just because in the bubble there's so much uncertainty and who's going to really prevail. And I think with everybody kind of starting from that same pace of, you know, no one's really playing hard. Milwaukee has a chance. I, I, I will say they have enough. And I think against the Lakers or Kawhi, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe if it's like a team like Denver or Houston, it makes it possible for 100%. Like yeah, but like, I, I I think in the East for sure like they could get to the finals it's just because of all the East teams. But if, if the they get West, away from Miami, yeah, or they get away from Miami. They get away from Miami. But the, but the West sure. is is very is very deep. It's very complicated, and all the players know how to guard Giannis because they're all forwards. Like all the top forwards are in the West right now. So a lot of have to happen for Milwaukee to win. Exactly. So I'll take a chance. Call me Charles Barkley. Next, final one. <coughs> is Rocket Ball? Going to be effective in the seeding games. So rocket ball, which is a new term that we're going to keep saying a lot. Well, I mean, they're small using ball. It. They're using it. Right? So why can't they're, we? they're doing like a very, very type of small ball that's super fast and I think super, super small and super small. Super PJ PJ Tucker's your five and Robert Covington's your four. Yep. So it's extra extra small, but very extra small. But <laughs> I will say this: Russell Westbrook can't shoot threes. Okay, it's very clear. Why? Why give up his talent just because he can't do one thing? Why not build around why not build a team around him where his talent is still going downhill, going to the rim, getting to the rim as fast as he can, and then kicking out to one of those shooters. And all four guys on the court besides him can shoot the ball. So That's what the, 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 the system is. Yeah, so that's it. That's what I'm trying to I'm trying to okay. say. Like okay. they like Mike D'Antoni, as much as a lot, a lot of people rip on him, but Mike D'Antoni and the, the owner or whatever his name is. 
of Houston. They really thought outside the box when they when they not only traded with uh, Clint Capella, but they said, okay, let's go get Robert Covington, add that next defensive stopper, so that that way. James Harden and Russell Westbrook offensively can do whatever, and they don't gotta worry. So I personally think it's gonna be very, yeah. a very effective. No, and I remember a comment. I know it's gonna be effective. We know it. It could be decent. It's just no. It's just against a team that has a lot of length. That's my only issue. Denver has so much length. The Lakers have so much length. We've right. seen the Clippers. They have a lot of length. But you know the first I mean? game they had against the Lakers, they did beat them. So I will, I will say. Who the Rockets? Yeah, played, no, the Rockets play the Raptors. What, with the first game is, is Rocket Ball? That line, okay. Yeah, so that means. And then they, the beat, and then they beat Boston, too. Yeah, you're Regard, right, yeah. Regardless, I, I think it's a good offense. I think it's a bad defense. And I think it's also not going to be that effective of an offense. Only because that it's just, you got Westbrook going downhill. If you go a box in one, okay, it can hurt you, right? Because then you got shooters always open. All you have to do is literally just have someone stand right there in the middle of the key every time. Hell, it's easier well, than them. Now the Raptors, who have done it best, have been one of the best teams of rotating yeah, on a yeah, defensive yeah. end. All it takes is an NBA team like OKC to realize if you rotate fast enough and you still match their speed to some extent, you can easily stop that offense. Yeah, and you can have the close. I like that what they're doing. We talked about this before. Mike D'Antoni said he didn't go all in in Phoenix, so clearly he's going all in in Houston. I just don't see it working because James Harden has to stand there and watch. James Harden likes the ball in his but coach, hands. But coach, okay, so if how about this? How about this? For the first three quarters, let James Harden stand there and watch. And let what Russell Westbrook be. So what about be. rhythm then? But then yo, but in the fourth quarter, he's gonna be in rhythm. He's been running up and down the court. I know maybe the shot might not be there, but you know James Harden's one of the best scorers in our league. He only needs one shot to get into the rhythm. I'm just saying, when you have to play against a good team that has great yeah, yeah. Oh, defenders yeah, like sure, the Lakers, sure. the Clippers. You're, you, but Westbrook's not getting down but, into but, the key. Okay, anymore. but see, but then that's 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 Houston thinking outside the box. It's because they knew. Okay, if Westbrook doesn't have that. At least our backup plan is okay. We still have good defenders on the court, and then we still have James Harden, who isolation wise is the best isolation scorer since Kevin Durant's not gonna be in the playoffs. So why not give him the ball when it's most needed? And you know them. This is Houston. For Houston, this is one of their best chances that they've ever had. Like, yeah. Realistic. Well, no, that's one hundred percent right. So, like, they don't if have... they if they don't if they don't give it all they have at all times, of course, not only they're not going to win a championship, they might not even get to that championship. They might not even get to the conference finals. But knowing that, we know that they're going to bring it. So that's why that's the only thing I'm saying. Yo, it could be effective, but yes, it has its downfall. All I know is Rocket Ball is not going past the moon. It is going to the moon, and it ain't coming back. So what's the moon? Conference finals? Com no second round. Okay? When you get into the sky, you beat the first round. Okay? When you get to the moon, it's the second round. Then the fly back is the third round, and to land is the finals. They ain't making it to the finals in order to get back in the atmosphere. They're going to the moon, and there's they're a, gone. There's a lot of teams that really want it this year. There's a lot of teams that have said, like, you know... Because of certain events, like we we want it, like the Lakers, Clippers, whatever. So like I'm, every team wants it. Clearly, you know, everybody, every team, wants everybody it. obviously wants to win that championship. That's there's we can't. We're not gonna sit here and argue that. It's just for Houston is that strategy wise. How much of that strategy is gonna pay off? Because because like I said earlier, if they face a team that has a lot of length, that team can just go to their lanky lineup, and yeah. it's a problem. Like the Raptors have this lineup they call their their jumbo lineup. Markin and Serge at the four and the five. Pascal plays the three, OG at the two, and then uh, Freddie and Kyle is your one. How is Rocky, How are the Rockets going to guard that line if they go to the finals? You know what I mean? I know they're in the in the finals, but still, like, how? What? What? What are they going to do? Yo, Robert, come in here. Yo, 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 come guard Marcus Gasol on the post. He'll just be like, okay, I'm a try, but he, the guy's going to get buckets on me whenever he wants. That's my only thing. I think it's it's workable, but it has a lot of flaws. It's like any other offense, it could have flaws. So we'll see what happens. I just think in, in the bubble, they, they ain't going very far. Right? Houston, we have a problem. Yeah, just that. Uh, extra step. Uh, with extra reps. Uh, extra tight. Uh, the extra next.